So as you guys can tell, I finally got my hair cut so I don't look like I'm 45% body fat from the shoulders up and then 4.4 from the shoulders down. I know I'm outside of the gym. I do actually exist outside of the gym, that is a fact. But we're gonna be going to Whole Foods today, giving you guys like a better idea of what I eat on a day-to-day -day basis. Since after doing those two videos where we tested my body fat with body fat caliper and we tested my body fat with a hydrostatic body fat testing, probably 6,000 DMs of people just saying, what's your diet on a day-to-day -day basis? What do you eat on a day-to-day -day basis? All that different stuff. So we're gonna jump in the car, head over to Whole Foods, probably gonna do like a full grocery haul, bring all the stuff back, and then we'll break it down inside. I've got three bags in front of me alongside this massive receipt. This is like a typical massive grocery haul that we'll go through on like a weekly basis. So since there's three of us here, me, Britton, and Tyler, we go through a ton of meat per week to put things in perspective. Three of these, which is three pounds of ground beef in like one meal. Because we do keep our meals so simplistic and so basic, we're having a lot of the same things on a day-to-day -day basis, which for a ton of people, it may not work. But for us, we just like to keep things simple and just do what works. Um, Below we have three different bags. I thought I'd split this into kind of like three sections just to keep it very clear and concise so that you guys aren't having to jump all around the video. We have meat, other condiments, supplements, that kind of stuff. I figured I'd put that all into one category. And then we also have fish and eggs, which I put together. So one of the main things that I want to kind of nail into your guys' brains in this video and kind of just get the point across is that the best diet is the diet that works for you that you can stick to over a long period of time consistently based on your goals. So for example, if you want to gain muscle mass, you may want to be in a bit more of a surplus. So you got to find the foods and adjust to what works for you. Whereas if you're trying to lose weight, find the foods that make you feel more full so you won't be hungry throughout the day. So we're going to jump right into it. So the meat area is where I spend most of my time whenever I'm grocery shopping. It's what most of my meals consist of over the past like five, six months. I've been experimenting a ton with carnivore. The first two things that I'll probably start with, ground beef. We have it in an 85.15 and then a leaner 93.7. This is the primary meat that I have in most of my meals. Because of the macros that are on it, usually I'll go for the 85.15 since it is a bit fattier and it fits better with the ketogenic macros or carnivore macros. What I find is that if I go too lean, I'll start to feel very lethargic mental clarity will go off and I just try to keep my fats around 65%, 65 even up to 70% throughout my day and then 30 to 35% protein, which is generally a ketogenic approach, except since I've been going more carnivore, I've taken out the 5% carbs and just increased my protein slightly. Even when I was doing a ketogenic approach, I'd still have higher protein than most people would and I found that as an athlete with my recovery, with my training, with all that different stuff, that I've had to keep my protein fairly high to keep fueling myself and keep building more and more muscle. For most people, you only really need one gram of protein per pound of body weight to optimize muscle building so anything on top of that is really just gonna help you stay full and satiated and that's what I found so uh, sometimes when I'm cutting and stuff if I have a lot more protein and I fill most of my diet with protein with meats and things like that is a lot more satiating throughout my day one thing that I do have to be super careful of and super cautious of is since I am pretty restrictive with my diet and I've cut out a lot of foods there are some micronutrients minerals all that different stuff that I'll be lacking so whenever I'm getting beef I'll go for a grass-fed grass-finished meat and you do want to make sure that it is 100% grass-finished because there's really no point in getting a grass-fed meat if it's just fed grass when it's born and then as it's going into production and being released for sale, they're just feeding it with a shitload of wheat and, and grain and all that stuff. So you're pretty much ruining the whole process. You might as well have just gotten the wheat, the grain fed meat in the first place. Grass fed meats overall have a better omega 3 profile. They have more CLA, which is an omega 6 fatty acid. So I also find it to be a little bit more satiating since the, the fat and protein profiles are just better overall in them. So if I'm cutting down and I'm already cutting calories, if I get a better quality protein source, I do find it to be a bit more satiating. On top of that, it has a little bit more vitamin A, vitamin E, those sort of things. All these little just micronutrients and vitamins and minerals have a massive effect on hunger and how you're feeling throughout the day. So since I'm cutting out a ton of other foods, 
I just want to make sure that all these are kept up. This is another thing I'll sometimes get. I'm not a massive fan of it, but, but sometimes I will get it just to switch it up. It almost has a little bit of a sweeter taste. So here we have ground bison. One cool thing about bison is that apparently in the States, it's actually all, all bison products are grass fed. But I mean, to be honest, it's pretty much useless because as I said, if it's not grass finished, then it doesn't really matter. So this is a bit leaner, so I'll try not to have it quite as much. I'll, most of the time I'm sticking to the 8515 ground beef and I'm sticking away from things like the 93.7 and then the ground bison as well. Right. Next up we have grass fed, grass finished ribeye steak. This is a good variety as you can tell, most of my meals are made up of just some sort of protein source, some sort of red meat, and then I'll throw in eggs or fish of some sort just to get a little bit more variety in. Okay, going to the sausage, sausage, Going into the sausage and kvassa categories, there are a few things that you gotta watch out for when you're looking at like sausages, especially in just local grocery stores and stuff. Anything that's really like pre-packaged, like smoked salmon, which we'll get into in a second, sausages, kvassa, all that different stuff. A lot of the times they'll put secret sugars, and I've talked about this in the past, like dextrose, uh, corn starches, things that affect your body just as bad or even worse than normal sugars. They'll throw them in and they'll put them in the little ingredient section. So even if you don't see it up here or anything like that, this one in particular, this kvassa, nature. Ranch, ra this nature's rancher kibasa actually says no sugar added very clear you read through all the ingredients completely clean and then these sausages as well these are tavarites mild sausages these are have a little bit more spices and stuff so recently i've been sticking away from them just because i found that spices and other things like that sometimes bloat me and i just don't like the feeling of that especially if i'm eating prior to a training session or anything like that so i tend to stick away from that and stick more to just normal red meats the one thing is though with these they are higher fat so someone who's transitioned into a diet that's higher fat and they're not used to having so much fat so it's difficult to get the fat in through you know things like uh, ground beef and they're having issues with that then using some sort of sausage or kielbasa is oftentimes better because I think they can get up to like 70 75 percent fat so here are pretty much the main meats that I stick to two types of sausages or kielbasa and sausage some ground beef some ground bison some ribeye steaks just recently I actually did find that there's bison ribeye steaks rather than just normal ribeye steaks and they actually have similar macros to to a normal ribeye I steak they're, they're fattier if you have those in store that's definitely another option as well that you can throw into your meals to add a little bit more variety all right that, that's good right all right that's the meat so here we have like fish and eggs most of my meals do pretty much consists of mostly meat. I do like to throw in some sort of fish for the mega two to three times a week for, for one or two meals in each of those days, just so that I'm making sure that I am getting the megas. And just to switch it up, add a little bit more variety when I am sticking to mostly just strict, nothing processed, nothing extra. Having a little bit of extra flavor variety definitely helps me stick on track with my diet. So here, we'll start. We'll start with the eggs. These are an absolute staple with every single one of my meals. I swear I have like four or five eggs with pretty much every one of my meals. I always make sure to get the pasture raised option just because the mega profile is a lot better on them. You'll notice with most of the stuff that I'm getting, it's focusing on making sure that it has good micronutrient profile, good omega-3 profile, and then good protein profile overall. So if I'm able to get the pasture raised options, normally we don't get the organic one because that doesn't really make a massive difference. And I'll definitely be getting a better omega-3 profile as well as getting other things like folate, which is going to help with cell growth, cell function, which is obviously important if you're training, if you're a high performance athlete and you're wanting to recover better, you want to build more muscle and you want to optimize your performance. So these are a massive staple in my diet. If I'm feeling crazy and I need a little bit more variety, then I'll have this mixed with some sort of fish like a salmon. On top of that, I'll add some sort of red meat like a ground beef or ground bison or even a ribeye steak. So sometimes on my last meal of the day, if I need something with a little bit more variety, I'll throw all three of them in. So next up, smoked salmon. I get both of these from Whole Foods. I'll use these on the go all the time. Similar to like the kielbasa or the sausages, which are already pre-cooked. Super easy to grab on the go and then you can literally just eat them super fast. So if I'm working or if I'm training or if I'm filming content and I'm out and I need to grab something quickly, then I'll grab something like a smoked sockeye salmon. Another option, if you don't if you don't want smoked salmon, because I know smoked salmon can be a bit more expensive, then we have the Wild Planet Wild Sockeye Salmon, which is definitely another option. And then when I'm at home, I'll usually do a Wild Caught Alaskan Sockeye Salmon. This one's just from, from Costco, I think. And this tastes amazing with the skin on. It's a little bit different. I do like the crispiness of skin, as opposed to these, which obviously are skinless and boneless, so. Oh. 
This is for this is for when I'm feeling super uber bougie. So I don't do this one super often because I know these are this is way more expensive than even these, which are already expensive in themselves. And since we're already getting pasture raised egg, eggs and grass fed ground beef and all that different stuff, quite an expensive bill if you're throwing in fish eggs and caviar on top of that. So pretty much all of the salmons are high in B12 and vitamin D. While I'm in Los Angeles, I feel so much better than when I'm back home in Canada because I get so much more sunlight and so much more vitamin D. I think it's something that is quite neglected. Something that I look to do pretty much every day is just go on a few walks, usually after my meal, so I don't get that after meal crash that you'd normally get if you just sit there. I also take a good vitamin D supplement, and then these have B12 as well. So, so last fish option, I believe, is the Wild Planet Wild Sardines. Just like the other canned stuff, the other pre-packaged stuff, you can take these on the go. Probably not the most appealing thing, and it's something that I don't do a lot of the time just because I'm not a massive fan of the texture, to be completely honest, and the taste. So if you open those on a subway or in your lunch room, everybody's gonna hate you. Period. These are actually loaded with calcium as well, which is really good because not a ton of stuff is just gonna be loaded with calcium. So I'll try to stick these in like once a week. There's two options when you're in the store for the wild sardines. You can either get them just in water and salted or you can get them in olive oil. Most of the time I just choose to go with the water option, especially if I am trying to maintain a lean body weight or, or a lean body fat percentage, just because I don't want the extra calories from having the olive oil. Last bag of the day, supplements. You guys are always asking me what I'm taking for supplements. I'm not gonna talk about like pre-workout pump formula. If you've been following for the last little bit, you'll know that we're, we've been working on our own for the past little while, so that's definitely coming soon. Starting things off, I guess creatine, that's that's pretty massive for, for muscle recovery, strength, all that different stuff. I take around five grams per day. This is just a normal creatine, it's a powder. So I'll literally put it on the food scale, which is where I measure everything. If you don't have a food scale, that's literally the secret to losing weight because you need to track your calories. Even if you're not calculating to the absolute 100% decimal point every single every single calorie, you're gonna be exact, you're gonna be consistently inconsistent, and you're gonna be able to track over time. I use this pretty much everywhere I go, and then this is what I use just to measure my creatine out. So next up, magnesium by glycinate. I take that pretty much every night. The other magnesium, if it's magnesium citrate, pretty much just makes you shit your pants. And this one actually helps with muscle recovery. So if you're gonna get a good magnesium, this is the one I generally get. And I find that that definitely does help with my sleep and recovery a lot. So, so two more supplements here. I have vitamin D somewhere in here, and then I have beef liver. So most of the time I just take the supplement because it's a lot easier to get down, it's a lot more accessible. And I know for most people, cooking up actual beef liver doesn't taste the best. Obviously it is better to get it from a real source if you can, but if you don't have access to it, same thing with bone marrow as well. I'll just take a beef liver and bone marrow supplement just to make sure I am getting the micronutrients from it. Just like the pasture raised eggs, beef liver is actually high in a lot of B vitamins as well as folate. So as I said, when it comes to muscle recovery with cell function, cell growth, all those different things, beef liver is gonna help a lot. And then with bone marrow, which I don't have right now, we actually ran out, bone marrow is high in calcium as well, which is obviously important. So these are some of the main supplements I take, but to be honest, most of the stuff that I get comes from real foods. All right, I guess there's one more thing here. Redmond's Real Salt. This is just a normal, like a mineral salt, Celtic sea salt works as well. For someone who's flushing electrolytes constantly, it's super important that you're salting your foods heavily and stuff. And since I am on a ketogenic diet, you do flush more, or keto carnivore diet, you are gonna flush electrolytes more frequently. All right, drinks. If you don't use drinks to curb cravings, then I don't know what you're doing with your life. These are literally lifesavers when it comes to dieting. If you're getting into like a, a diet stage and you're trying to like kill cravings between meals, if you have some sort of drink, it definitely does help curb your craving. Here it's just a decaf black coffee. I'll have black coffee, I'll have these, these Zevias, which are carbonated, and then I'll also have this uh, sweetened electrolyte drink. So these are both sweetened with stevia. I have no issues with stevia. The carbonation in these actually does make you feel a little bit more full. So if you're getting into like really lean stages, you're having less calories overall than sometimes feeling a little bit more bloated, just like the same way when people have more fiber, can help curb your cravings for longer periods of time and make you feel less hungry for longer periods of time. So, wrapping things up, if that wasn't the perfect ending to the video, then I don't know what it is. A lot of people have issues with like, when they're on the road and things like that, and as I said, sometimes pulling out some sausage or some sardines may not be the best option if you're in a public place. These are just pork rinds. They're pretty tasty. It's almost like a chip. They have a nice crunch. So again, adding these different things to the flavor profile definitely helped me a lot. These are pretty tasty. They're pretty good and they're absolutely 100% clean. Yeah, so by the way, 
this is not just the only Zevia we get. We're absolute addicts. I do use this to kill cravings. It definitely does help if you're trying to cut down to a really lean body weight. So that's the end of the video. Pretty simple, pretty basic. I thought I'd keep it very simple for you guys just so it's very clear. I didn't think I'd overcomplicate it too much. Again, as I emphasized at the beginning of the video, the best diet is the one that you can stick to for a longer period of time. So take this with a grain of salt. Don't just go out and apply this immediately. Be like, oh, Tristan does exactly this. This is what I need to do. What works for me definitely won't work for every single other person. So you really do have to experiment with what diet you want to use and what diet works for you for yourself. Hopefully you guys got a better insight as to what I eat during my day and what my grocery haul would look like on a week to week basis. And then if you guys did enjoy the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.